Welcome back everybody and what I'm going to be talking about today is my bushcraft pack loadout. Right then, so I'm in the wilds of Warwickshire this weekend, uh, spending a few days out in the woods just practicing my bushcraft skills, getting away from the Christmas shopping and all that crap. Um, and what I, what I thought I'd do is just talk through what I carry on my body, in my belt kit, in my pack for a couple of days out in the woods. And this isn't just a single day, so I've got all my overnight kit here, all my water, all my food, all my overnight sleeping kit, all that sort of stuff. So first thing I wanna talk about is what's on my person. Um, I'm wearing a smock. You can see it's not a military smock, but it's kind of military style. So plain colors and all that. Personally, I don't really like wearing sort of camouflage gear because I've served in the army and it makes me feel a bit weird. Nothing against people that do wear that sort of kit, but you know, ex-military and that's the way it is. But a windproof smock is a really good thing to be wearing for the outdoors when you do bushcraft type activities. Uh, gives you a bit of protection from the weather, but it's not too warm. So when you're chopping wood, sawing wood, all that sort of stuff, you're not gonna overheat. So in the pockets then, up here, first thing I've got is a silver compass. Always useful to have on you if you're in an area you're not too familiar with to make sure you can get back to your little camp you set up. Top left then, what I've got in here is a waterproof notebook, right in the rain, and a load of pens and pencils. You know, it's always good to be able to record stuff that you're doing, make notes, maybe, you know, things that have worked, things that haven't worked for you, and just record them for future reference. Okay, on the right hand side then on the zip pocket, I've got my infamous admin line that most of you have probably seen if you've watched any more of my videos. On there I've got a whistle for attracting attention, a secondary sort of backup light, a small knife, which is great for just doing your small detailed tasks, tasks and stuff, and a lighter. And all that's held on with a lanyard into my jacket so it can't go anywhere. Top right then, what I've got is my ferro rod and striker. And then in my bottom right pocket, I've got a pair of gloves. So these aren't particularly for keeping my hands warm or anything like that. These are for protection. They've got Kevlar built in. I don't know if you can see that there, but they've got Kevlar built into the palms and that's gonna give you really good protection against blows from you know bladed object objects so things like your axe your saw your knife when you're processing wood these are going to give you essential protection so just a glancing blow or something these are going to save your hands obviously if you take a full-blown whack with an axe into these then things are going to go wrong but hopefully you shouldn't be doing that sort of really bad woodmanship but essential to have on you and you need them either in your pockets or on your belt so that you're not tempted to do stuff without your gloves on Next part of the kit then is my bushcraft belt kit. Now I've done a previous video on this, I'll put a link to that video here. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll not go through this in detail, but I'll just mention what I've got on my, on my belt kit and what it's for. So the reason why I've got this, it's not meant to be a comprehensive survival kit like some people have thought. So I haven't got any water on there, I haven't got any shelter on there, but the idea for this is I've just got a belt with all my tools on, ready to go. So when I'm moving away from my campsite, I've got my stuff with me and I don't have to keep going to and from just to pick up little bits of kit like knives, saws, stuff like that. So going from right to left as I'm wearing it then, I've got a Leatherman there, I've got my MOD survival knife there. And if anybody wants any of these, I've got these available, not on my website anymore, but if you want to email me, I can sell you one of those and pay through PayPal if you want. I've got a small fire kit in there. There's the uh, dump pouch there for collecting tinder and stuff as I'm moving around the area. Quite a comprehensive uh, trauma kit there, so that's really important for when you're working with bladed objects, knives and saws and stuff that you can actually save a life if you do actually have a bad cut or so. Um, folding saw there, and then I've basically got my possibles pouch there with all my other bits and pieces, things like more fire kit, um, other bits and pieces like my woolly hat, stuff like that. Just bits and pieces in there for anything else. That's the belt kit in a one of there. So the actual pack itself then, this is the JJ's Beast Bergen and it is quite a beast. It can't. It actually can go down quite compact. You can see there it's not massive at the moment and that's because it's not fully packed out. I've got just what I need, no load of crap that I don't need. Um, I've done a previous review on this. Again, I'll put a link in the description here. 
to that review. On the outside of the pack then, I've got an axe. So this is a recent purchase. I, I recently had a smaller axe than this. This is a Ray Mears one and it's absolutely awesome. I've been using this all weekend to help process my wood and it's an awesome tool. Obviously when you're using uh, an axe you need to be very careful, you need to know what you're doing with it. Um, if you swing this thing around um, without being careful, being complacent, you're going to hurt yourself. But a great tool. On the other side then, I've got a Silky Big Boy. This is another fairly recent purchase. This is um, in addition to the folding saw that I've got on my belt kit. This is a more of a serious one. You can see there, it's like a samurai knife or samurai sword, should I say. Um, and yes, I have been using this this weekend to some good effect actually. So processing some big old chunks of wood with that. Again, you need to be very careful with that. The teeth on this are very sharp, but what an awesome tool that is as well. Okay then, in the side here, what I've got is a small kneeling pad. So when you're kneeling down and you're, you're starting your fire, when you're processing like smaller bits of wood and stuff, it's always nice to be able to kneel on something. So just a cheapo sort of multi-mat kneeling pad. And then in this side, <laughs> and there's a good reason why this is on the mesh pouch on the outside, this is my pee bottle, okay? So if you're um, out in the woods in the cold, as I'm now in December in the UK, um, you don't really want to get too far away to have to go for a pee once or twice a night like I do at my age my age nowadays um, so having a pee bottles can be a bit of a lifesaver um, external pouches then on the Bergen what I've got here and here are water bottles so these are the British Army issue litre water bottles and on the centre one here I've also got the old metal mug the Crusader mug for cooking in so we've got two litres of water there, which I find is pretty much plenty for a weekend. That one's still full. That one's empty now because I've been here for just over 24 hours. Um, in this pocket here then, what I've got is my cooking system. So I've got an MSR pocket rocket and a big canister of gas. Obviously I'll be using that in conjunction with a Crusader mug to cook with top pouch then this is the basher pouch that JJ's put on their Bergens which I think is a great bit of kit because it keeps your your basher or your tarp separate from your kit now you know we, we camped out last night and it only rained a little bit um, but even even if it doesn't rain generally you're gonna get condensation and dew and stuff on your tarp and it's gonna be at least damp if not a little bit wet so it's nice to be able to separate that from the center you know the central part of your Bergen so I've got a Warbond Outdoors tarp there and that's got six stakes there from um, TRC Outdoors, the tent stakes there, and then attached to the actual tarp itself is jungle knots. So I've got six um, sets of jungle knots on there, all in those little mesh pouches that are absolutely awesome for getting your basher up and down relatively quick. Um, and it's nice and compact, it kind of, it's less bulky than carrying bungees with your uh, with your tarp. So all that goes together in that little compact pouch there. That's the outside part, apart from the top flap. So in my top flap I've got all my smaller items. First thing out of here then is a head torch. It's really a good idea to have your head torch in an accessible place where you can get to it really quickly. You know, this time of year darkness gets comes in really quickly. If you've got your head torch in an accessible place, you know, it's going to be really useful for when it does get dark if you get caught out a little bit. So you need to know where it is. Next thing out there, another really important thing. So I've got a trauma kit on my belt kit. This is other stuff. So this is my secondary med kit. It's all your sort of more less life-threatening injuries and stuff. Just cuts and bruises, nicks and scrapes, headaches, that sort of thing. That's what that deals with there. But when you're in the outdoors, it's important to make sure you have got a med kit to deal with all those more sort of minor injuries. Next thing I've got is a brew kit, and this is savagely depleted because I've been here more than 24 hours. So I've got the three in one brews there. Next thing I've got is my wash kit, and I've covered this on previous videos briefly. The main thing I've got in here is stuff to look after my teeth. So toothbrush, toothpaste, dental floss, a small towel, and then there's some wet wipes in there too. 
again I'm not that bothered about looking pretty at weekends doing bushcraft unlike some people that I've seen on YouTube um, so there's a woolly hat obviously at night it's going to get cold so it's a good idea to have a warm hat of some sort I normally wear a cap during the day because when I'm you know doing strenuous activity I don't want to be wearing a woolly hat and overheating but at night it comes in really handy then I've got my Sawyer Mini water filter, filter system with a C-Knock Outdoors bag. I've shown that on previous videos, obviously. That's for processing my water if I need to. Uh, next thing I've got in here is a waterproof bag and there's a few sort of smaller items in here. So I've got toilet paper, which is the biodegradable stuff. I've got a spare lighter, spare matches, some mini silooms, uh, and AAA batteries and a power bank to recharge my phone if I need to. Okay, next thing I've got in here is some cordage. So I've got some paracord. And again, this is a bit depleted because I've used um, some of that this weekend. So there'd normally be more than that in here. I've got some water purification tablets. So if need be, I can double tap the water in a, with the, uh, the water filter. Siloom, so I can mark my campsite. So if I go away from the campsite, if I'm not familiar with the area 100% and I need to go away to collect wood, collect water, stuff like that, and it's maybe getting a bit dark, I can hang it up by my basher and that'll mark where I am so it's easier to find. I've got a small repair kit. So in here I've got patches to repair, a sleeping mat. I've got a sewing kit there with Kevlar line. I've got super glue, ranger um, bands, bungees and some more cord. got a spork to eat my food no whittling spoons for me I'm quite happy having my titanium spork uh, the essential Tabasco for everything that goes into my grid and a little rubbish bag so obviously anything that comes out with me goes into this that's rubbish so I don't leave anything don't leave a trace going into the main rucksack then so undoing the top First thing I'm going to come across, as per always whenever I go outdoors, is a rucksack liner. Now, you might think, oh, I'm only going out for the woods for the day, it doesn't really matter, I don't need to waterproof my kit. That's a really bad habit to get into. Um, if you're not waterproofing your kit, it's just a bad habit. Um, you know, it can pee it down even though it's not forecast to, possibly. And, you know, if your Bergen's left outdoors without some sort of waterproof cover on your kit, it's potentially going to get wet. So first thing out of here, talking about the wet, is a waterproof jacket. So that's an Arcteryx Alpha uh, SF issue jacket. So I've got that during my service, and that's a great waterproof jacket, especially you know for doing stuff, doing bushcrafty stuff. It's quite a tough one. It's not a delicate one. Then I've got basically a waterproof bag with my spare clothing in. So in here I've got a warm layer, a couple of pairs of socks, and some foot powder. And again, that's in a TRC Outdoors waterproof bag. You know, it is waterproof, but also what it does is it organise my kit within my rucksack. So it's not just jumbled up in, in there together. Uh, Tennessee hammock. So when I'm away doing stuff at weekends, doing bushcrafty kit, uh, I like sleeping in a hammock. I prefer that than sleeping on the ground. It's just, you know, it's more comfortable, I find, than sleeping on the hard ground. So nice to have one of those. And if you are in an area where there's midges and stuff in the summer, then this hammock's going to give you 100% protection from those midges at night, so they're not crawling all over your face when you're trying to get your head down. Next thing then is a sleeping pad. So that's an inflatable type one by Climate. Uh, as you can see, it packs down really nice and small. Um, and just, you need that in a hammock as well as sleeping on the ground as well. Anyone that hasn't slept in a hammock, um, your back will get really cold at night if you don't have a layer of some sort below you, whether that's a blanket, or a sleeping mat okay so that's what that's for there and last thing in here then is my sleeping bag so this is a Corinthia Defence 4 quite a relatively sort of bulky heavy sleeping bag I wouldn't normally take this if I was doing lots of mileage but if you're only going into the woods if you're doing a relatively short walk into the woods um, this is nice for your sort of comfort levels if it's particularly cold like it is now in December so that's why I've carried this this weekend but a good sleeping bag just a little bit bulkier than what I normally take if I was kind of on the hills the only thing I haven't got here that I would normally have is some rations 
um, because I've eaten them all because <laughs> it's the end of the weekend and I'm gonna go home in about half an hour and the second thing is this thing here so I've got a thermal mug and the reason why it's not in there is because that's full of brew so I just had a brew made for me by my partner in crime and yeah that's full of coffee so that's the full content there of my rucksack and my belt kit the rucksack weighed 33 pounds all up that's including a litre well two litres of water sorry uh, and the belt kit weighs five pounds so 58 sorry 38 pound all up um, which ain't too bad really um, seeing as I've got lots of tools things like the axe the big survival knife um, the other saw um, and the water and you know some fairly good protection from the elements so that's all the kit there now no doubt people will uh, put in the comments below oh why haven't you got this why haven't you got that um, you know everyone's got their own requirements their own ideas their own takes on stuff this is just what I carry okay and what I take I've found this to be absolutely fine for what I do I've been doing this sort of thing for quite a while um, but I'm interested to see what other bits of pit uh, bits of kit sorry um, people out there carry what stuff comes in handy for you so any comments chuck them in the comment section below and it'll be interesting to see what you got to say thanks for uh, watching everyone don't forget to like share and subscribe if you haven't already done so and as always stay prepared <laughs>